Good morning. I'm Ed James, and welcome to Black Almanac. Today's guest is no stranger to Black Almanac, having appeared here on numerous occasions over the years. A graduate of the University of South Carolina College of Pharmacy and worked as a pharmacist for 16 years, well versed in the healing powers of herbs, vitamins, and other natural products. He is a leading lecturer at many of the leading colleges and universities and medical groups and hospitals around the country. The subject of natural health and healing. Joining me when I return, everyone's favorite herbal pharmacist, David Foreman. The Sarasota County Branch NAACP presents the 30th Annual Freedom Awards Banquet. Join us on Thursday, October 8th at Hyatt Sarasota as we pay tribute to individuals and businesses from our community. Get your tickets today at 941-355-2097. Well, it's good to see you again. I, I, I thought maybe you had uh, moved to another country. <laughs> as much traveling as I've been doing, I could have. <laughs> and it's nothing like putting on the mileage. And, uh... Yeah, frequent flyer miles, but you know me. I love to share what I know. And so uh, it's, granted it's work, but it, it's fun to do. It's always good to be home, though, with you. Oh, absolutely. Well, let's talk about there's wonderful things now probably one in every four friends of mine uh, are taking the satin for high cholesterol but you're saying that satins are not necessarily the best thing for us besides the high prices yeah I don't even think it's just me that's saying it now even the FDA seems to keep adding to the precautions. Mm -hmm. uh, I think the first precaution, you know, coming from my, I was a pharmacist, I owned my own pharmacy when the first statin came out. A lot of people remember the drug Mavacor, I think mm -hmm. that was the first one. I don't even know if that's sold anymore, but um, back then, the thing we, the one thing we knew is it, it could cause uh, muscle pain, permanent mm -hmm. muscle pain, and a lot of people dealt with it anyway, because they, they wanted to have their cholesterol lower, and you know, now we have a, a, a laundry list of of not possibilities but probabilities of things that can go wrong and um, we know it affects the liver negatively the liver is a really important organ in your body for getting rid of toxins or neutralizing mm -hmm. toxins uh, we know it affects cognitive function and you think about the people who are are probably the ones who are taking statins for cholesterol mm -hmm. um, are going to be 45 and over and those are the people I'm 51 now you know that are are starting to question their ability to think and, mm -hmm. and function that way. Um, but probably the biggest thing now, and this is, to me, it's probably the scariest of all of them, is uh, a new study came out showing that even healthy individuals, mm -hmm. so people that didn't, didn't already have something really wrong with them, but maybe were taking a statin just to get their cholesterol low as a preventative, I guess you could say, for heart disease and stroke, that even those people had a significant risk of developing type 2 diabetes and 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 yet the people who are the probably the majority of those people that are taking it you know and I don't want you to call out your one in four friends because you might yeah. hurt their feelings yeah. but a lot of those people are probably um, a lot of the people already taking statin are probably overweight or probably already have a blood sugar issue to begin with so mm -hmm. the last thing we need to do is cause more problems with sugar which would cause more problems with heart disease which would cause more problems with weight mm -hmm. so you know, I have this thing I do now as a natural health expert, which is I try to help people evaluate the risk versus the reward, and you, you I know, struggle with that. You know, it's interesting because sometimes just watching your favorite program on television, whatever it is, and then a commercial will pop up for the latest new drug, and they tell you all this wonderful stuff it'll do. And then they begin to tell you the negative things that could be, right. could happen to you. And my question is, once I begin to start seeing that, I, I, li I listen for that now. And I'm not sure if the uh, cure is not you know, worse than what you're trying to cure. Uh, well, and with regards to cholesterol, I think cholesterol is way overblown. Um, cholesterol is actually not bad. 
your body manufactures it and your body needs cholesterol. If you, if you lowered your cholesterol to some absurd low level, it would cause other health problems. Your body uses uh, cholesterol for every cell membrane. That's, what, that's, the, that's the outside, it's like a balloon. If you don't have a, a solid uh, you know, balloon, what's gonna happen there is gonna leak out of it. Same thing with your cells. Your body uses um, cholesterol to manufacture your hormones. Not just the sex hormones that we mm -hmm. think of, estrogen, progesterone, testosterone, but also other uh, hormones like insulin or um, maybe that's why blood sugars are going up, you know, because your body doesn't have enough cholesterol to make that hormone. Or uh, probably one of the bigger ones that I always run into here in Florida, which always baffled me until recently, which is um, you need cholesterol to make vitamin D. Mm -hmm. And yet I've run into so many people living here in Florida that have really low vitamin D levels mm -hmm. and yet they're without, playing without the sunshine yeah and yet they're playing they're outside you know they're playing tennis they're gardening they're going for walks they're playing golf I mean we are an outdoor community mm -hmm. I mean lately it's been kind of toasty but mm -hmm. and yet these people have severely low levels of vitamin D and I kind of wonder if it's because we're all taking drugs to lower our cholesterol to these what I consider absurd levels as opposed to really addressing um, maybe the underlying uh, factors that would lead to plaque buildup. Cholesterol is not evil. It's what happens to cholesterol that makes it evil, well, that makes your arteries clog up or uh, to lead to a heart attack or, or for plaque, to, yeah, or plaque break off to cause a stroke. So cholesterol is not bad. It's what happens to cholesterol that makes it bad. I have one question before we begin to look at all the wonderful things <laughs> have, you brought. I have a table full today. <laughs> and... I'm of the age, memory loss. Now, I'm not saying I'm losing my memory, but once I start seeing that cluster, um, the statins could possibly, statins could possibly cause memory loss, I begin to wonder. I, I can't, is, I can't is that blame real? you. That's legitimate. It really is. I mean, it's one of the, one of the precautions that the FDA now has. I, um, it's actually on their website. I, it, actually, when I've been doing uh, radio segments on this topic for the last th three or four months, I bookmark on my desktop mm -hmm. certain articles that I found, and the one I found that was really compelling to me was actually from the FDA, and it was the warnings about type 2 diabetes and cognitive function and deep muscle pain and liver issues. And so, yeah, I mean, it's... if. To say that I'm, for you to mm -hmm. say, or even for me, but for you to say, I'm this age, so, m you know, maybe it's about that time I'm, I'm you know, I shouldn't be as sharp, or, you know, you know it's, it's okay for me to forget where I put my keys once in a while. I don't, I don't agree with that. I don't agree with that. I, I, um, I feel like sometimes, it, you know, it might, take, it might take a while for the medications we're using to, it's not like you're going to start, start a statin today mm -hmm. and and tomorrow you're going to be going you know you can't remember who, your wife's name mm -hmm. i mean it's just not going to happen that way um so it could be slow and, and but steady prolonged uses right yeah exactly it's something it, to talk to your doctor about mm -hmm. if that's a concern for sure over the years when you've come by you often s tell us and share with us the healthy things that we can do to kind of change the direction we may be going in with something else mm -hmm. or substitutes for certain medicine. And I see you have a basket a, of goodies, a, a basket <laughs> of stuff, yeah. and lots of it. It's cereal. I'm hoping. Yeah. All right. It looks like everybody can see that. Okay. So, mm -hmm. so normally, what happens when when we find out we have high cholesterol, we usually have run away from. Um, we usually run away from foods that contain fat and or cholesterol. Mm -hmm. So we go to fat-free, low-fat, no-cholesterol foods. Pretty much everything I have in that basket there are the kind of things that we, like I have breakfast cereals. Those breakfast cereals are high in refined or processed, well, let me stop for a second. We need to understand where cholesterol comes from. Okay. All right, so 80% um, of your cholesterol is manufactured by your body. That cholesterol, majority of it's made from sugar that's floating around in your body. So anything that's going to increase your blood sugar or anything that's going to lead to an increase in blood sugar um, will have more of an effect on raising your cholesterol levels than for you to have 
three eggs every day for breakfast. As a matter of fact, we even now, even the government's coming out and saying, you know what, we were wrong. The egg, you're not going to absorb the cholesterol in eggs. So the, that basket represents uh, foods that have no cholesterol or low fat. So we often, in, you know, instead of, uh, um, you know, it, well, I don't even know, instead of for snacks, instead of buttered popcorn, people have pretzels. That was me. When I owned my pharmacy and I found out my cholesterol was 240, I'm like, man, I'm just going to start eating these cholesterol-free pretzels. Mm -hmm. Not realizing that starches, which is what pretzels are, mm -hmm. or a baked potato, which even if I did a baked potato with no butter, it's a starch, it's going to break down into sugar, or I'm having my, my little O's over there that don't have any fat in them, uh, the, again, it's a starch that breaks, that breaks down the sugar. If I've got the raisin cereal, raisins are high in sugar. They mm -hmm. usually have a little sugar coating on them, yeah. you know. Mm -hmm. So you've got sugar and you've got the starch that converts to sugar. So those are the foods that are more likely to raise our cholesterol and do it quick. Like if you have triglyceride issues, sugar and starches are the number one thing or number one and number two thing that are going to raise your cholesterol. So I'm telling people, most people say, oh, man, I'm not going to have uh, my eggs anymore, or I'm not going to, you know, I'm not going to have beef, pork, or chicken. I'm okay with those as long as you eat leaner cuts. Mm -hmm. uh, what I'm saying is, you know, eat, eat, don't eat the fat, eat leaner cuts, and avoid those starchy or sugary foods because those are really what's causing the problem, in my opinion. And it's not, you know, my three egg omelet every day. <laughs> <laughs> well, let's look at. So, that's the bad stuff. Right. We should just throw it off the table. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and somebody who, who will have to clean it up no, will, 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 will be very upset with us. <laughs> what about this? All right, so what I, what I put together for people is uh, are, are some food solutions to helping lower your cholesterol naturally. Mm -hmm. So the first one I have there is, uh, is black tea. Now, when I've been on before, I'm always a green tea kind of guy, right? Mm -hmm. Well. People don't realize that black tea has a lot of health benefits to it as well. And, and drinking black tea has shown to lower your cholesterol by up to 10 or 11% in as little as uh, 6 to 12 weeks. Now, the key, though, Ed, and I brought an example. Uh, you don't, if you're going to have tea, especially this time of year, we're going to have cold tea, iced mm -hmm. tea, um, you know, or in the south it's sweet tea. Mm -hmm. Well, remember that sugar is what's going to you know, make your, your cholesterol go up. Blood. Yeah, mm -hmm. so... I brought a sugar substitute, which is, that's actually out of my cupboard at home. Mm -hmm. I use that in my coffee in the morning. It's called Stevia. It has a zero calorie, zero effect on your blood sugar. And it is, a, it is a relatively, you know, it's not as good as sugar tasting wise. Mm -hmm. But if you need to sweeten your tea up, uh, whether it's hot or cold, I don't really care. Use a sugar substitute at least, okay? All right. Um, now, there was a, a time when in the early days of sugar substitutes, they frighten us with the little pink envelopes and cause cancer. Right. But uh, we are beyond that now? Well, no, I mean, I'm still, I'm still anti the artificial sweeteners that man has made. Mm -hmm. This is a natural sweetener. That's oh, why I've, this that, is and, a natural and sweetener. And I can tell you, I've done TV segments on this um, in other states mm -hmm. around the country, and I've never brought that with me. And today, because you guys are pretty much in my backyard, I decided to bring my stevia with me mm -hmm. to show people. And that's from the local grocery store. So it's not like I had to go to some, you know, health food store to mm -hmm. buy it. That, that came from one of your local grocery stores. And it, it does come in packets if you want. Mm -hmm. um, and there's multiple brands in the, in the grocery store. But I'd prefer you to stay away from the pink, blue, and yellow packets that you can okay. find so easily mm -hmm. and go with something uh, natural like that. Well, see, I had not even made that separation. I thought all sugar substitutes were the same. Oh, yeah. But I should have known if you got it, it's <laughs> well, natural. Oh, let me throw one more thing in because a lot of people think honey's natural, right? Mm -hmm. yeah, which it is. But honey will drive your sugar up as well. And so I'd say if you really are struggling with cholesterol, blood sugar, you should really, even if it's natural, unfiltered, local, mm -hmm. I'd still stay away from it. I'd go with something like stevia, okay? No. Always, I don't think we've had a segment when we talked about food that you didn't have vegetables. I know, I feel kind of silly bringing it. But, but let's talk about what do we have and why. Well, I brought a veggie tray, and I can tell you that I didn't have to cut or wash any of that because the stores are doing it for you now. 
And earlier I had a salad, remember? I, yep. But I was like, hey, I'm not going to put it up here. Mm -hmm. um, you can even buy ready-made salads now, even at convenience stores. So mm -hmm. science is showing Stanford University, one of the most respected universities in this country, uh, like I feel like we needed another study out there on, on fruits and vegetables, but in this case, vegetables, a diet high in vegetables is shown to have a positive effect at lowering your cholesterol for multiple reasons. One is um, fiber will trap the fats in your meals and, and your body won't absorb them, so that'll help with heart health. But probably for me, the most impactful thing is if you are going to eat those um, processed, refined foods, if you have protein or a complex vegetable, complex mm -hmm. carbohydrate is what I was going to say, or a vegetable um, with it, it'll slow that sugar effect down. So uh, again, and it doesn't matter, I've got, I mean, this was a veggie tray I picked up at the store. Mm -hmm. You know, if you don't like what I have in here, you know, uh, my daughter doesn't like celery, but she'd eat the carrots and the, and the peas over there. Mm -hmm. You know, it could be cauliflower. It doesn't think of, matter. Think of a vegetable, the more veggies you can eat, and again, nowadays the stores have made it so easy. Even if you don't like cutting, chopping, and washing, they pretty much have, you're going to pay more for it, but it's yeah. already done for you. Well, well, in my house, it's going to be washed again. Me too. Uh, it, it'll be, it'll be, <laughs> it, it, uh, the wife will get it because it's cut and chopped, but uh, she comes from a family of a lot of girls, and, and they were <laughs> raised that. You wash and you wash and you wash. That's me. Okay. I, I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm a washer, a soaker, yeah. and a washer, and then a rinser. Okay. <laughs> I just want her to know, see, I was thinking about you in these, washing these vegetables. I've yet to do a segment where we haven't brought your lovely wife up, and yeah. I kind of wish she'd come in one time when we do this. Uh, she stays home and, <laughs> and, and watches the program and then judges us. <laughs> All right. Okay. Well, can and I say hi to her? You can say, you can say that. <laughs> what, what have we got next? I, I know I see beans. Yeah. But there's a blue bottle and a white bottle in front of the beans. Let's talk about that. All right. I'll talk about the bottles in a second. So um, along the lines of foods that help lower your cholesterol, mm -hmm. beans. Pick a bean. That's why I've got three different kinds of beans here. And I, I have lentils I didn't bring with me mm -hmm. today. So uh, beans, uh, one cup of cooked beans a day will lower your cholesterol by 10% in as little as six weeks. So a lot of people are looking for a substitute for the rice, mm -hmm. the couscous, the baked potato. You want a good substitute on your plate, something that's still going to taste good, mm -hmm. sort of have that starchy texture, mm -hmm. but it's going to be high in protein and actually do something to lower your cholesterol, have some beans. Uh, at, at my house, we make uh, lentils mm -hmm. and I make black beans a lot. So, uh, so add those. The top one is a white, a white kidney bean, mm -hmm. and that's where the bottles come in. I know we've talked about phase two before mm -hmm. with regards to weight loss. It's one of my favorite weight loss supplements, and the, the reason it, it's one of my favorites is science has shown that taking phase two on a regular basis before a meal that contains starches, mm -hmm. that it blocks the starch from being broken down into sugar. Why is it part of my cholesterol thing? I think you already know this, but I'm, because I've kind of beaten that drum a few times. Mm -hmm. Again, starches and sugar are what's going to really drive your cholesterol up. Your body's going to use it to make it. So if you are going to eat those types of foods, because they're, they're tough to give up. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's tough to stop having potato chips or potatoes or french fries or having your cereal in the morning. or Not everybody eats couscous. That's kind of a weird one for people. But chips and pretzels, if you're having trouble giving those up, if you, or you like pasta, that's another mm -hmm. one because it's a starch. If you take phase two before a meal that contains starches, this phase two will block 65% of it from being broken down, meaning it won't get converted into sugar and then absorbed in the, into your bloodstream. So it'll help negate some of the effects of the foods that, I mean, granted, I'm telling people just to stay away from them. Mm -hmm. But I can tell you the other day, I'm trying to think of, I was traveling, and, uh, and I had a meal that had a lot of starch in it, and thank God I traveled, with, I've traveled these little mini bottles of phase two, so that I, you know, I took my phase two to help negate it. I don't have a problem with cholesterol, I don't have a problem with my weight, I don't have a problem with blood sugar, but I use it when I know I'm gonna cheat. And for most of us, cheating is a daily thing, it's not even looked at it, right? <laughs> don't absolutely. you think? Oh, yeah. absolutely. So that, that's, that's why the bottle's here. And you can see, the phase two is the name of the ingredient. So if you go to your local health food store, I brought two brands for competing health food stores just mm -hmm. to show you. It's the name of the ingredient. It's not 
I'm not telling you to go buy it one place or the other. Oh, I see. Yeah. Well, from the back, I couldn't tell. Yeah, no, it's okay. Yeah, That's why yeah. I'm bringing it up. Yeah, right. I'm sure everybody can see that. Yeah. Oh, they can see that. Yeah. But I was, just, I was just saying I couldn't see what the label was. Oh. So, yeah. now, getting back to this beans thing mm -hmm. again. All of the beans are good for breaking the whole entire bean family. Yeah, so lima beans, mm -hmm. pinto beans, you know, chickpeas, mm -hmm. uh, kidney beans, you know, red kidney beans. I've got the white ones here. Mm -hmm. Red beans, black beans, lentils. Yeah, the whole bean family. Now, don't over. I, I know how it is. <laughs> I know how it. I don't know if you're going there or not. Yeah. If you overcook them, which is yeah. a good southern thing, that if you get yeah. a nice pot of lima beans, yeah. you're gonna cook it down to where they're super mushy usually. And, Kind of negating no. some of the effect of it. Yeah, like anything else. No, we, right? We, we, we let's not overcook it, right? No, exactly. Yeah, I mean, don't get me wrong. I mean, I, uh, uh, you know, I, I eat things that I tell people not to. <laughs> <laughs> a confession. I'm, yeah, well, no, I mean, I'm a realist. I, uh, I don't think you have to live in a glass bubble to, you know. Okay. I mean, I, but don't be obsessive about it. Don't overdo it. Yeah, right. And then you don't have to feel guilty when you do. Garlic. Garlic. I can tell you when I get home tonight, I'm going to roast this. I'm okay. going to defeat the health benefit of it when I get home. <laughs> but it tastes good. So garlic. Um, we know that fresh, crushed, or chopped garlic has a significant effect at lowering your cholesterol. So if you're going to season your food with garlic, instead of cooking with it in the pot, pan, casserole dish, apply it afterwards chop it up and by the way the stuff you buy in those jars that's already crushed or chopped mm -hmm. it's not going to cut it the real health benefits from garlic come right after it's crushed and that that stinky smell that mm -hmm. you get um, that's where the health benefits going to come for cholesterol and a whole bunch of other things but so if you are going to have you know soup and you want you want garlic seasoning you can cook it cook it first with some garlic in there but if you really want to get the health benefit uncooked so raw crushed mm -hmm. or chopped garlic you want to add in there and, and, and at drop, the end and drop right. it on yeah when you when you when you bring it up to make a bowl exactly exactly and you know um you know people say well i like garlic on my pizza well pizza goes into the basket over there basically of mm -hmm. not healthy things because it's starchy um but if yeah if, you know you're still looking for another way to uh to to take i mean if if i was going to take an aggressive role I'd be drinking more black tea. Green tea does lower your cholesterol too, okay? So I don't want people, mm -hmm. it's just most people don't like the f flavor, the look of green tea. So this time I included black tea, but again, unsweetened. But, you know, I'd, I'd eat more veggies. I'd drink black tea or green tea. I'd eat, I'd eat more beans as part of my everyday diet. I'd add phase two in when I'd, I cheated on my diet. Um, I'd make sure I added fresh crushed garlic when it was appropriate. Not mm -hmm. everything, mm -hmm. you know, you don't want to put garlic on everything. And then Ed, I, I brought you dessert tonight. I know you see, you see. I I've, snuck, I've, it, I, I snuck I, I've, it. I've, I've already started in it. <laughs> My confession. Do you like chocolate? No. Oh no. Well, then you're not gonna like me. That's well, bitter. But but do you realize that I? Yes, I like chocolate. Oh, you do? Yeah, oh, I, I don't I, know. I, 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 just I, don't like, I don't like chocolate. Well, you see, I already opened it while we were <laughs> sitting here talking. Of course, I like chocolate. So. And, and yes, I have chocolate. Yeah, so, and here's the cool thing about that chocolate and that everybody wants to look for when they're looking for something heart healthy. Mm -hmm. I mean, it wouldn't be, you know, it wouldn't be a good day if you didn't have a little dessert, right? Mm -hmm. You want to focus on the higher percentages of cocoa, and that's why I prop these up. I don't know if people can see the percentages oh, yeah. of uh, the higher the percentage of cocoa, the better it's going to be for your overall heart health. Uh, we know it helps with uh, inhibiting platelets from getting sticky, that way you know maybe less likely of a stroke. But the the, the higher the one you're trying there, I think is 70%. Um, the key to look look at all your and by the way, I, again I bought these in one of our local mainstream grocery stores. I didn't have to go to some specialty shop to buy it. Everything I've got here you can find mm -hmm. readily. You know it's not like you can come home. You couldn't go home to your wife and say, I couldn't find it anywhere. She's going to say, well, David said you're lying. Mm -hmm. <laughs> she might say that, right? Oh, she would say that. <laughs> so, yeah, you want to eat dark chocolate, and you don't eat a lot. You just had a little square. 
that's probably enough to do the trick, or, or you could have a couple of squares, but don't eat the whole bar. I will make that decision. <laughs> <laughs> you brought it, but I'm going to make this. I brought it. You can have the rest of it for sure. But, uh, you know, the key is to look at the sugar content also. So if it's mm -hmm. a... If you are buying a sugar, you know, sometimes because it's bitter, the darker mm -hmm. the bitter taste, more, you know, mm -hmm. bitter taste, they might add more sugar to it to sweeten it up. So read your labels, make sure they haven't oversweetened it. And, and the milkier the chocolate is, or the, the, yeah, well, we know what that means. The milkier the chocolate, mm -hmm. um, that means they've added milk to it. Mm -hmm. And milk fat really is not good for your, your cholesterol and your heart health. So you want to go with the darker um, chocolates for just many reasons. Mm -hmm. And... You're enjoying so, that. So, oh, yes, I am. <laughs> I am. It's very good. I'm glad. Now, I think for those who may have joined us a little late, we got a couple of minutes here. Okay. Talk about those breakfast foods that everyone has. Everyone has some kind of cereal in the house. Right. I learned last night on the nightly news, the national mm -hmm. nightly news, that cereal prices were going up and that 90% of the country has cereal in their home. And I'm one of the 10% because we don't, except I have that in my home right now because I use it for TV. So cereal's bad for your cholesterol. Here's the deal, again, because a lot of people, like you said, might have tuned in a little late. 80% of your cholesterol is made by your body. The majority of that cholesterol is made from sugar. Mm -hmm. Excess uh, glucose and fructose that are floating around. So anything that has sugar in it or converts to sugar easily, meaning starches. Sugars, I mean, <laughs> sugars, cereals are chock full of starches. They're, they're ground up milled grains, mm -hmm. um, and there's usually sugar and salt added to it. Again, that's sugar and the starch converts to sugar. And then, like I have that raisin cereal there, mm -hmm. it's got raisins high in sugar. Raisins usually have a little sprinkling of sugar on them as well. Right. And those are going to drive your cholesterol levels up or anything else that's starchy. So I've got pretzels, cholesterol-free pretzels, mm -hmm. uh, fat-free couscous, a baked potato, which everybody thinks is relatively benign. It's a starch. If your body breaks that down, you're going to have Well, let's have do an this. Issue. All right. In this 45 seconds we got left, let's talk about how to get in touch with the herbal pharmacists. Um, I always say it's one-stop shopping, so to speak. Just go to my website, which is herbalpharmacist.com, mm -hmm. uh, and there you can connect to my Facebook and Twitter. I, I know you guys always give that out. Um, mm -hmm. If you can't, it, if it's you can't on write the screen it, right yeah, now. If you can't write it all down, just go to herbalpharmacist.com, and you'll be able to click on how to connect to me to Facebook, Twitter. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I accept emails. I get a lot of emails from people that have been watching your show for, mm -hmm. for decades now. And uh, I, I encourage them to reach out and ask me questions even about other topics, not just today's. Okay. So, listen, we thank you for coming by and sharing with our viewers. And uh, don't stay away so long. <laughs> okay. I try not to. And as always, have a great day, Suncoast. Congratulations to the Sarasota County Branch NAACP on their 30th Annual Freedom Awards Banquet. Join us for the celebration on Thursday, October the 8th at Hyatt Sarasota for an evening of elegance, fun, and live entertainment. We will honor individuals and businesses from our community in the categories of Rising Star, Go Forth and Prosper, President's Award, Community Service, Public Service, Education, Business and Industry, and the Lifetime Achievement Award. It's the 30th Annual Freedom Awards Banquet, 355-2097.